Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Now, stepping back, though, once you know that there's an issue, that your loved one has an issue, one of the most important things that you need to deal with is you may very well be able to stay in your home. Frank and Mary may be able to stay in their home for a long time, as long as they're safe as long as they're safe, as long as Mary doesn't fall down, as long as Mary doesn't wander off, as long as the house is a safe place. So the question is, is your house a safe place? So that's why I asked Carol DiRienzo from Solace Renovations to come in. The reason why, I've done a lot of presentations with Carol. Um, she's a registered nurse. Her husband was a contractor. They decided to start a business, and the business was focusing on helping people who want to stay at home, stay at home by trying to adapt their homes. I was amazed by the number of adaptations that are available and that are financially feasible for folks. I'm going to talk about finances a little bit at the end, but I wanted Carol to talk about what those kinds of improvements to the home might be that can make Mary safe so that Mary and Frank can stay at home. Carol? Thank you, Arthur. Thank you all for coming. Imagine waking up in that house that you've loved for all these years and not knowing where you are or not knowing how to get to the bathroom, how to get to the kitchen. Those are some of the things somebody with dementia faces on a daily basis. So we're going to talk about some general tips in which you can do to make your home a little safer for a loved one who may be suffering from dementia. In regard to safety, we always think prevention. What can we prevent from happening? How can we adapt the environment? And how can we minimize the danger? So there's really four elements that we look at when we want to streamline a home for somebody who may be suffering from dementia. Simplify, label, secure, and modify. Simplify. So this is my daughter's bedroom from long ago. If you had dementia, you would not know where you were regardless because it was a mess. It was cluttered and cluttered and cluttered. But somebody who has no clutter around for them can process their environment a little easier. So one of the first things we recommend is to remove clutter from all the pathways that somebody may walk to. So if you have some beautiful, what we call tchotchkes, out and about, but they may be in the way of somebody walking down the path, we, rec we request that you remove them or put them to a safer spot so somebody may not trip into them. Papers all around the place, as you have dementia, your balance may get a little bit um, unsteady or your eyesight um, starts to deteriorate. You have a hard time understanding depth and perception. So there may be a stack of papers that may have to be stepped over while that person may trip over instead. We tell people to remove or cover mirrors. And the reason why is somebody with dementia sees that reflection in the mirror and doesn't know who it is and gets frightened. So those are one of the other things we recommend. Scatter rugs and throw rugs for the same reason. You can slip and fall. That's pretty a standard thing that we do in all home assessments is tell people to remove their scatter rugs. Remove portable space heaters or fans because somebody with dementia doesn't know how to operate them and doesn't remember and could get injured either by burnt or have their fingers um, hurt in the fan. Poisonous plants, not something that you usually think about as a plant. But somebody with dementia may not understand that that's not the fig tree that they used to grow at back in, the, um, in their garden and may try to eat something from that plant. Poison control is a wonderful uh, number to always keep on hand by your phone just in case something does happen. Electrical cords. As you can look down here, this is a trippable electrical cord. So we always try to make sure that people keep their electrical I cords. That would be as a demonstration. Yes, he did. <laughs> he does that for me. Um, so we tell people to either keep very short cords or tape them to the, to the floor so that somebody doesn't trip over them. Fish tanks, pet habitats. Somebody with dementia doesn't understand anymore that your, that pet was a loved one sometimes and can try to eat the dog food or the kibble can try to play with the fish or go fishing. 
So we tell people to try to limit the areas in which, in which pets are. And then artificial fruit. I know on my refrigerator I have a thousand magnets and since I have grandchildren now, I've moved them way up because the kids think that it's something to eat, something to play with. So artificial fruit, magnets that are shaped like fruit, something that would be confusing to somebody that is not what it should be. Those things we tell you to remove. Label. One of the wonderful things um, is that if you label where things are for a person with dementia, it will help and guide them. Sometimes you can use word labels as the previous slide showed, or sometimes you could use pictures. So at each phone, we tell people to place a card with emergency numbers and home address so that if something does happen, the person with dementia may understand and say my name and address. We tell people to use a photo phone because somebody with dementia may say, okay, I remember that's something bad. Something bad is going on, so I can press that number and reach 911. Photo phones, photos of loved ones. When you do some, things, some, some events with dementia, they tell you to keep a photo book and show people pictures. They may associate, okay, that picture is somebody I know. If I need help, I can call that picture. We also recommend that you have an answering machine set to the lowest amount of rings that picks up right away because somebody living at home with dementia really can't answer that phone and process what's going on. And so um, you'll get your messages and they won't have to be worried about it. We also take um, cordless phones and cell phones and equipment in a safe place because somebody with dementia may pick up that phone and not understand what it's for and could call China. Label of contents in cabinets, drawers, and closets. So closets and drawers that you do want somebody with dementia to go into, we tell you to label or put pictures of the cups, of the glasses, of the food, of their underwear, their pants, their shirts. Label rooms and doors that are allowed to be used. Bathroom. Put a stop sign by doors that are not allowed to be used and put a no soliciting sign outside the front door. You don't want somebody, same as with the phone, to come to the front door and to solicit somebody with Alzheimer's who's not going to understand and process and may sign you up for a gym membership that you're not going to be using or a roof repair that you don't need. Secure and modify. Doors. Some of the one things that we recommend is to put a door, a lock, a bolt, either very high or very low on the door so the person with Alzheimer's doesn't understand where it is and how to access it. We tell you to keep a key for that door right by the door in a hidden spot and a key outside in case you should happen to get locked out. Alarms, bells, signals. I tell people now's a wonderful time. Christmas is coming, a little early to every store in America, but Christmas is coming and they have a lot of sleigh bells out now. Hang a sleigh bell by your door so that if you hear that bell go off, you'll know that somebody's trying to go out that shouldn't. Paint the entrance and forbidden doors the same colors of the wall. We talked before about visual acuity. acuity excuse me. Um, somebody with dementia cannot really understand when everything is painted the same color, that there's a door there. Um, it allows it to blend in to the scenery. But a door that you do want somebody use, to use, like their bedroom door, the bathroom door, put it as a different color, as a wood door as a versus a painted door, because that way the person knows, okay, that's a door to go in, and if there's a picture or a label in front, okay, that's the bathroom. Glass doors, we tell people to place curtains over glass doors or decals on the door at eye level so the person with dementia will know, okay, this is, a, this is something here, whether they understand it to be a glass door or not, but they understand that there's something there to help them see. Remove coats, keys, cell phones from exit and entry areas because it doesn't remind a person that that's a way out. Install safety knobs and covers on all doors. Go to Home Depot, they have a whole safety section. Um, they sell packages of knob covers that is a little bit difficult for people, hard for me to do it with my grandchildren as well, but it is difficult for people to open the door. It's a wonderful, inexpensive way. Um, we'll talk about them again. Um, they make them for both knob handles and now they make them for lever handles since lever handles are becoming much more popular. Windows. Instore, install limiting bars so that they, people can only open the window a little bit and can't crawl out. 
we talked about electrical cords and switches. We also recommend in that same safety section getting plug covers because somebody um, who doesn't understand how to activate a machine, putting it in, if it's blocked, they can't even get there. Have smoke and CO2 detectors in the bedrooms, halls, and check your batteries often. Have an escape plan and practice. That's the most important thing. It becomes a routine. So if you practice an escape plan, when somebody with dementia hears that alarm, they'll say, hopefully, if it's practiced enough and it becomes a learned process, they will know what to do. Have fire extinction, extinguishers accessible but hidden. When we talk about fire extinguishers, the kitchen is usually the place that is one of the most um, insecure places in our homes. They now make automatic shutoffs for your stoves, both gas and electric, so that if somebody with dementia does feel the need to cook and it walks away forgetting that they started it, it will automatically shut your um, system down. They also make fire suppression systems that fit right up underneath a hood so that if something should catch on fire, it'll immediately um, extinguish it. Unplug, as I said before, small appliances, your microwave, your coffee pot, your toaster, because if it's not functioning and the plugs are covered, then the person doesn't have access to it. Um, remove spoiled food from the refrigerator. I know Julie had talked about one of the signs is there's a lot of spoiled food. A person with dementia, both taste and acknowledgement will not understand that that food is spoiled. We talked about childproof latches um, on, in the outlets, but also put them on your cabinet drawers and doors, especially to any cabinets with have breakables, cleaning products, medicines, alcohol, matches, knives, sharp utensils, the plastic bags like shopping bags, and the family drunk, drunk drawer. That is a um, universal drawer that's one that he probably or she probably has always used, but it's a license for a lot of issues.